am i audible yeah so uh, before we begin please take a moment to read our code of conduct we are all here to learn together so please be respectful of other people views understanding the differences being kind and considerate the way you engage the chat will be open throughout and we do encourage you all to participate also please be keep your mics muted during the session over to the speaker to begin the session cool so welcome all and uh, this is this is ashish a developer advocate from elastic uh, doing the community events uh, meetups conferences bbls and uh, 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 handling the developer relations so uh, first of all i welcome welcome you all and uh, welcome to the virtual attendees so uh, we having uh, three tracks today uh, dynamic tracks i think uh, first one is going by the mukaram it's uh, he's going to uh, uh, he's going to cover the hackathon the he he had experience in a very he's an expert in a hackathon and he's going to uh, going to explain how he you know uh, use the elastic search in that uh, if and i'll show you the quick demo if time permits so uh, it it will be like how you search on a google so how you can achieve those features like this and uh, the third is i think uh, our very own uh, vivek vivek sir from microsoft so he is going to cover the elastic apm so feel free to ask anything any question uh, make it interactive it should be two way okay so i'll invite i think mukaram to just take over the stage and yeah you can start with the session Uh, advocates are there who are happy to assist you answer your questions youtube link is there this uh, session also we are recording and we have a past session as well you can go and explore about the different topics how you can use the elastic search and the elastic stacks and uh, we have a different user group as well so we have a group for bangalore specific so uh, you can you can just subscribe and if we have any meetups in a bangalore you will get notified so we are trying to get start the meetup thread in a bangalore uh, after the pandemic so we we will try to do in a uh, once in a two month like this uh, we have a technical forums discuss.elastic.co where yes uh, uh, you can ask you can ask anything about the elastic stack how how to get start and already there is a lots of resource available official elastic website documentation is available you can just it's a good start point we having a contributor program as well uh, so anyone is willing to contribute in a elastic stack or maybe and contribution is a terms of like uh, you want to answer on a stack overflow or any kind of contribution you can just join this program and you will get the rewarded and uh, the recognition from elastic so yeah we are uh, giving the uh, cloud trial you can just uh, go to this link and register uh, register uh with a sign up with your account and get start with the uh, cloud trial and uh, if you want to extend the trial just please let me know my dms are open if you have any doubts any queries let me know so we can raise the uh, trial period on a request basis so it will be a 14 day trial uh, i think where you can just explore all the observability security and uh, search specific things Are you also giving them internship on Elastic? Uh, <laughs> so definitely, we'll let you know uh, when we have a such positions. Uh, okay, I think I already talked about the speakers. So the, we having a uh, these uh, these tracks today. So over to Mukram now, guys. Mukram, thanks. Hey, uh, good morning, guys. Uh, I I would need that to see if there are any questions. <laughs> so I was thinking I'll just okay. Cool. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, this has been like after two years after the pandemic. This is like the first in person one that I'm doing. Um, and yeah. Uh, so I wanted to keep it like a very uh, vague topic and based on the audience and based on uh, how it goes, right? I'll make shifts according uh, uh, on all of those factors. I have different. Uh, i don't have one particular uh, way of doing this so as we go along right as i get uh, input from all of you guys we are actually going to change based on uh, our based on that our flows uh, so 
how do you win a hackathon and uh, how do you do it with elastic so the the picture there is a 2017 uh, where we won the best presentation at singapore so this was for asia incubation program so in brief right uh, so i'll uh, i'll put a date on myself so in 1995 right i was actually doing something called logo so uh, i i think that most of you wouldn't be aware what it is so it was like a small turtle and based on commands right it could go left right make a small square and stuff and this is at an uh, this is an era where you had crt screens and stuff so uh, just doing that was like considered okay that is programming um yeah so other than this what else have i done uh, i have uh, like in the past one and a half two years right i have done about eight hackathons uh, i had done seven and last week i did eight i did amazon summer i came top eight in uh, 36000 entries so the idea here is to basically take those some of the learnings from a hackathon bring it here and how uh, does it help in your day job right like vivek just said he doesn't actually use apms on, in his day job but he is basically trying things out so the whole idea here is to basically try things out so yeah so i want to put a disclaimer also uh, these are like real world examples right so some of the hacks you are going to see are lie in the gray area so i would uh, put in a note of caution there cool so where where uh, where do you guys go to get new ideas on technology hackathons on any of the things like any uh, any you, uh, things that you follow any handles that you look into online and offline guys like for example if you have to go to a hackathon today or you want to study technology right all of you want to basically make a career in technology so how do you know what is the cutting edge what is the bleeding edge are there any dms insta no it is tweets any discord right okay discord who, uh, okay who keep their uh, hand on the pulse and so on okay any other places where you get newer information like the bleeding edge of technology or something that is like curated you see kickstarter and so on whatever okay okay so uh, i would want to introduce you to something called news.ycombinator.com okay what is ycombinator it's like a startup that creates startups okay so this uh, page right uh, is what i read every morning i don't read a newspaper i read this so what this is is basically what is whatever is the top news in the world right and this is curated because people upward things and people downward things and whatever you read here is like pure magic and from here right things get picked up to other uh, like uh, numerous places but this is like the uh, place that i uh, usually read about uh, what is the newest in tech so this is something that you need to uh, like even if you are building a, a college project you are in your company or doing some job you need to really understand that what is the bleeding edge is like for example uh, like in 2019 we were doing apm right and uh, at time it was pretty good but now the industry observability as an industry has become a huge thing so all this actually started from a uh, y combinator post on elastic apm so uh, this is like the the pulse that i follow uh, if anyone has some other channels or something that they look into uh, happy to hear about that okay so that is one part of the thing right the other part is design so design is very subjective and um, now with nft coming up and a lot of uh, things happening around nft right design has become very important so the the second pick for me would be behance so a lot of uh, freelancer artist and uh, ux designers and uh, uh, people from multiple uh, uh, like multiple different um, uh, how do you say it parts of life right put up their work on behance so uh, if you uh, if somebody says uh, i am i plan to be a ux designer right you should have your uh, designs shown uh, to the world on behance it's like the github for uh, designers okay um and then it comes to search right in a hackathon you need three things you need an idea you need a great design and you need to be able to search like god so the three things is what i am going over today um, one is google the other one is about uh, what data you can get what insights you can pull out and what actions you can take so for this entire dia part right uh, i have extensively used uh, elastic in all of my hackathons okay so uh, anyone worked on ar vr sort of stuff no okay uh, none from here also okay cool so 
Yeah, so you know that there are apps out there, even uh, things like Asian Paints is doing this where you can basically uh, take a photo and make color changes accordingly, right? So these are again uh, at the top of it, right? It doesn't look like a search problem, right? But I'll show you uh, how it is. Okay, how search is very important for any hackathon and how Elastic helps you with it. Uh, any ideas? Anybody read about Elastic? How is it started? And no, cool. So, uh, so Elastic is uh, all the way back from 2010. Uh, at the end of it, right? Uh, there is an open source uh, Apache Lucent project on which uh, Elastic is based upon. So, uh, instead of explaining you to you what it basically does, I'll show you an example on IKEA. Oh, internet issues. So, uh, you know IKEA, right? Everyone is aware of IKEA, right? Cool. So, uh, IKEA has been coming out with catalogs all the way from 1950, and this is their dump of all their catalogs. So, what do you see here? You see a page and you see a year. So, now uh, what Elastic is is very similar. Now, the content of the thing, right, would be anything, but now you are able to search by a year. So, I can go all the way till 1950 to current day 2021 and I can basically from that year open their book. This is exactly what uh, Elastic would do. You basically have for the entire page, right? You have a year and year is your entry point. So something uh, something to think about is uh, uh, this is how Elastic would do it. Search problems. So how many of you use Google Lens? Oh, cool. I thought it was like new. Great. So uh, again, uh, this is a, a search problem rather than an image problem, right? You're basically trying to match some of the things, match some of the attributes and get back. So again, uh, uh, Google Lens is a search problem. Okay, now I have a fun activity for you, okay? Uh, you've got a missed call and you're not supposed to use true caller. You're supposed to figure out what is that number? Who is that number belonging to? Any ideas on how you could do that? This was an actual uh, idea that I came up with. You are not supposed to use true color. How would you figure out the number? Sorry? Call them back. Call them back would be a <laughs> very... Or call them from your uh, girlfriend's phone or somebody <laughs> else's phone to get an idea. That is, that, that is doable. Something else. Something with technology that you can use to figure this one out. There are a few online services that let you. No, none of those, uh, none of those taken. Uh, true color is out of the no, picture. Okay, something else online. You are going to try to search that number. Maybe Facebook and try to figure out what who's that number and stuff, right? Okay, good. So this is what I did. Okay, so uh, you know that true color isn't really good because they have leaks and they can uh, they use your number to do something else. They'll actually sell your whole uh, data to somebody else and make money. So this is what I did. So you know uh, uh, Google Pay, right? So what I just did is basically put that number into Google Pay <laughs> and I figured out what is that guy's name. <laughs> so yeah, this is one of those things that were like, oh God, this was, this was the use of technology where uh, it was not intended to be, but now uh, everyone is on Google Pay <laughs> and you can do this. So next time you have a problem of search, you can try that out. Okay. Uh, the other one, right? All of us uh, do online shopping. So uh, today we are going to exploit online shopping uh, with a different way. So uh, how do you know what is the price of something, right? Um, so there are uh, like companies built who tell you price history of a product. This becomes really important for companies, right? If you're a competitor, oh, I didn't give my intro at all. Uh, okay, maybe at the end I'll give you my intro. So uh, companies, right? They want to figure out what is the cost of a phone on Amazon today. Uh, tomorrow in a sale, right? What is the price? How will you figure that out? So I did the same thing. What I learned from my uh, day job into, I bought it into my life and this is what I'm trying to do. Um, I'm setting up a web crawler. So in your elastic stack, right, you have a 14 day trial, uh, you can go set this up uh, for yourself uh, where we are looking at one particular product. So this is the product that I'm looking at. Okay, I'm looking at a water heater that is of 25 liter capacity. Uh, the cost on both Amazon and Flipkart is about 10K. So this is what I did. 
I actually set up a crawl to figure out the price during sales and when it was at the lowest, right? I went and bought it. So the actual price was about 10k. I got it for about 4,800. 4, so I got two for 10k. And all this was made possible because I was monitoring their page for the price change. As soon as there was a price change, I went and bought it at that point. So yeah, this is this is one of those things that uh, I learned and I bought it and I made some uh, hefty profit on. Okay, uh, we have a next problem statement uh, where we where we are trying to basically figure out um, some uh, XYZ manufacturer. So now you know, right? Everyone wants to talk about make in India, make for India, and all kind of jargon. But the problem itself is pretty hard to, uh, I mean, uh, solve. So first, you need to figure out. Uh, what is that uh, category you want to enter into? Who are your competitors? Lot of things, right? So any startup you want to do. I am taking an example of a cloth manufacturer who already manufactures clothes, doesn't know what is going to sell, what is the trending thing in India or what is selling. So for this, right, uh, even on a different note, all the way from 2017, right, uh, Mintra has been using similar uh, uh, tech, AI bag tech, which is going to basically say, okay, A-line kurtas are selling more. So our design should incorporate A-line kurta or this is the color uh, 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 selling more uh, online. So this is the uh, next challenge, right? You, are a, uh, you want to be a high profit making uh, uh, company and you know infant clothes sell a lot. Uh, what, how, how, if you are a manufacturer, right? What, what would you think would be the way to come up with the best uh, solution? Uh, so the challenge would be like, uh, what are your thoughts or uh, what are your ideas? If today I asked you to tell me which is the best selling product on Amazon, how would you do that? Any ideas? Crawler is uh, already taken, so no crawling. Okay, uh, we'll go to Parth. Parth, tell me if uh, today the shirt you're wearing is really nice, okay? How did you end up buying this shirt? I just went to commercial street and I bought it. <laughs> uh, okay, if we went to commercial street and bought What? Why, why did you choose the particular one? What was it that you liked about it? I like the color. Okay. You, you like the color and you bought it. Okay, so that is one, right? So on a similar approach, right? Uh, my approach is also kind of similar to Parth's. So Amazon gives you something called a bestseller page. Okay, so you know what are the top 50 best selling things in each category. So if I had to solve this problem uh, for a customer and say uh, like uh, people like Parth are more interested in particular kind of clothes, I would end up uh, figuring out what are the things that are uh, top selling in that category. Men's shirts, top selling. And then I would come up with that. We'll, we'll look at all the designs there and maybe uh, you can uh, using all of that data, you can generate a new one. Cool. That brings me to actual work on Elastic. So uh, this is uh, one of those ideas that I uh, wanted to build or I built and I did not succeed. Uh, this was about animal testing. Uh, so uh, are you guys aware of what animal testing is? And this is going to be about more of chemistry. I don't know how many of you, how many of you like chemistry? Okay, I, I don't like chemistry to be very honest. But then uh, the problem that I was trying to solve, right, needed chemistry. So uh, the idea was that, uh, you know, like we have a lot of uh, new companies that are coming up that are basically talking about uh, not doing animal testing and still they are releasing products, right? So how do you know that uh, the product is safe? Any ideas? Like they say that on the label, right, they say no animal testing is done. But how would you know that uh, without even testing it on animals that a product is safe or not? And animal testing itself has its own problems because you're not actually using uh, a human trial, you're using animals there, right? There is no 100% match. So results that you get, right? And what it actually is can be different. So this was a very uh, juicy problem that I thought of. I was like, damn, how, how can we solve this in a hackathon and uh, maybe uh, have it as a solution? Anyone, any ideas how uh, we can avoid animal? This is again coming back to tech, uh, tech okay? Thinking from a tech perspective, uh, we want to basically uh, be able to uh, just uh, uh, with whatever chemicals you have, figure out is it safe for humans or not? 
Yeah, actually, you are, you are very close, and that is what I actually wanted to build also. So uh, that is uh, exactly one of those uh, websites that does that, right? So carbon black, for example, uh, that is not actually used in uh, household things, but it's one of those chemicals that is used, right? So we are basically trying to do the same thing, but then with a twist, right? So uh, the idea for the hackathon was this: I basically uh, take Google Lens. Uh, take an image of the product and because google lens already allows you to take the text right take the text out move it into a chemical database so that is what uh, our uh, idea also is for today okay how many of you already visited the the students basically they visited the this elastic website anyone no okay cool so uh, the thing is here right uh, it's pretty straightforward. So if uh, if you ask me, it'll hardly take you 10 minutes to set it up. So you can do two ways. Uh, one is you do a local setup. The other way is you basically use the cloud, uh, for which Ashish has already given you a 14-day trial already. So I expect all of you to log in, try it out, and build something out of it. Okay, so uh, this is what I did. Okay, so for this uh, particular demo, right? So we can use two ways to do this. Uh, one of the ways is again web scraping that uh, web crawler that I talked about. Uh, Elastic offers an, uh, a web crawler. It, it is although it's still in beta, right, Ashish? It's still in beta, but uh, I actually did try it out last night. So uh, we can actually use two ways to do this. One of them would be to basically use your uh, uh, web crawler as a service and crawl the entire db the other way is uh, there are already csvs available with all the chemicals and uh, you can again run it in two ways one is on local and one uh, the other one is on the cloud so this is what uh, has been done um, okay name me any chemicals no there is no this thing oh yeah so uh, this is what i did okay uh, so rather than just doing uh, a very simple data upload and just doing some chemicals i actually put in brands also so uh, i don't know how many of you are exposed to us markets so uh, there's a uh, there's a okay uh, um, you already know uh, things like mama earth and stuff in india right that or or Nike for example, Nike is a much better uh, example. So <laughs> Nike sells makeup, right? So on a similar note, you have something called Sephora in the US. So uh, what I have done here is I have basically taken a CSV uh, from crawl data as well as from uh, uh, from whatever is available on the internet, and I have dumped everything here. For example, Sephora, right? If I say brand name is Sephora, these are the different things that they are uh, uh, working on. And these are the different oh, and uh, in US, right? Uh, they have to actually uh, declare all the ingredients. In India, there is there is a uh, loop there. So what they do is they, they say base uh, elements and all that. So they basically avoid writing all the different things that are actually used in a particular product. But that doesn't apply to US. Hence, I've taken US data here. And then uh, what I've done is I've segregated it brand wise. So uh, my uh, CSV would look something like this so it's it's very simple it's an excel file to be uh, make it uh, to uh, to be made very simple right i've just taken an excel file and in excel file you can actually see all of the things i've already put in the company id and company name and the brand name and all of this is us data uh, collected from both sources collected from web crawl as well as from uh, all uh, whatever was available publicly so i pulled all of that into elastic now how what would you do with this right now you just have data now you have to actually create some insights out of it. So uh, what I did is one is on the brand name. So if I have to start a competitor for Sephora tomorrow, I can basically use what are the things that they are doing and uh, do similar things. It's like a R&D, receive and duplicate. Okay. Uh, the other way to look at it is uh, look at each of the uh, chemicals. Like somebody is very, uh, so you see this, right? It's already telling you because I've already searched that. So you are actually doing search 
based on our previous history so this is what elastic is known for so uh, any chemical you uh, look into uh, you can go by all of these ids so these are all the ids that i pushed in uh, here in my csv on top we have different ids right the same thing i pushed in here also uh, for example i want to do does anyone use hydrogen yeah so this is part of uh, product name itself is hydrogen so like you saw here we basically had uh, data that we couldn't make anything any useful use of whereas now we actually have dumped the data into elastic and with kibana we'll be able to come up with different uh, product lines cool any questions or any this thing this is no okay so this is what we did so we took an example of carbon black we are basically uh, pumping it from elastic and uh, we are basically dis uh, displaying that how many products use this we have oh yeah it's not a question right it's about human anatomy okay uh, this was actually something that i didn't want to go over but yeah uh, anyone has worked on wordpress no okay so this is where you can start for free it's called pantheon uh, where you can deploy a website for free and uh, in that website right you can actually get an elastic uh, for uh, for example you are building any e-commerce store right and you have a search capability requirement there so you can actually put in an elastic plugin and do that Okay, so this is uh, where I want to uh, now uh, get back to uh, one of the, the previous hackathon that I just mentioned about. Uh, this was called Amazon Sumbub. Okay, so the idea here is to basically build uh, ideas that can be implemented for India. So here, uh, my entry was again on uh, on a different this thing. It was on uh, voice over UX. So uh, we built an Alexa skill that basically, uh, if you talk to the skill, you can get your career counseling done. Uh, just uh, by answering a few set of questions so this was the idea that i uh, most recently built and yeah that is the end of the story for me uh, any questions i know i i gone like everywhere from chemicals to some hackathon to multiple things but uh, the idea here is to basically give you uh, the end uh, the thing that i want all of you to go away with is first think of ideas from where you can get good ideas right and how you, you are going to implement those um, and uh, from whatever you saw right uh, i've tried to take things that i've learned from uh, one domain and try to apply it to the others any questions sure any uh, questions offline Yeah, good. Great. Thanks, Mukram.
Guys, uh, give us a couple of minutes. Just give us a couple of minutes. You are unmuting and getting that noise. Yeah, actually, unmuted. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now you can hear? Yeah. You can hear. Perfect. Uh, so, online uh, attendees, please uh, confirm if it's audible. Screen is not visible. Can you do that? Uh, let me, let me, let me. When share it away. Extra. You did, yeah. You yeah, changed yeah. the city. Go back. Yeah. Perfect. This terminal. Okay. Cool. So uh, let's start, guys. And today we going to say the agenda is meet uh, like why elastic and. Uh, uh, we will we will get the overview of elastic stacks and uh, at the end we will see search as you type which which has a special field a fill a fill type in an elastic search so uh, in in the today's world we already you know engaging with the lots of apps digital digital era it's and lots of data is being generated in every day when everything is tracked and there is a lots of data points is generated so uh, as for the reports uh, there it will uh, in the by 2025 four, 480 exabyte data which is going to generate every day which is a huge and if you want to perform a search from these contents okay it's it's uh, very hard and especially the relevant search so and you you need a search okay you need a search <laughs> right now everything is search let's say you ordering the food or you do anything performing the root causes and yeah anything you any app you take there is a search is the essential part of that particular product so that's why where elastic comes in the picture the elastic is a search company so uh, the elastic search is a build for a search use case so every technology has their use cases so uh, you can by using elastic search you can fulfill you can build any kind of the search the cases you have so uh, search as you type is one of the case which we are going to see today and before that i will give you the quick overview of elastic stacks what is this and uh, yeah so one of the example is uber if you are finding the uh, typing the these things and finding the cab is a uh, uh, powered by elastic search they are using elastic search for this to finding the cab and uh, pretty trending app in youth so tinder uh, so when you match this uh, like the male female the relevant search it's powered by elastic search tinder is uses so uh, the, there is a lots of you know um, client we having food search app who is using elastic search so this, so how it builds it's built of these uh, with the help of the elastic stacks so in the elastic stacks the four major stack is elastic search kibana uh, log stash we have so and uh, we uh, with with on this stack we have a three major solution as well the enterprise search observability security so we are not going to cover the uh, the elastic solution you can 
explore on a cloud so which trial we uh, we have i have given you you can go and explore the all these three sections search observability and security so uh, let's let's uh, let's go quickly overview of this tax elastic search so elastic search is a distributed search engine data store uh, it's give the high availability because it's a horizontal scalable it if your data is growing okay and just you keep adding the server so and it will scale you can uh, we have seen the uh, use cases where people are using n number of you know uh, like uh, servers and to for the scale elastic search so yeah and uh, in elastic search the data is being stored in uh, json based uh, it's it's a no sql data store so uh, in in uh, elastic search there is a nothing like a, let's say a table or database but yes it's a indexes and a shards as uh, i think you have you must have seen in the mukaram slide it's uh, built top of the lucene uh, uh, lucene library of the apache so uh, every index and shards is a lucene library so it's basically where you have uh, inserted some data let's say it will going to index okay it it uh, index and that's why it gives the speed so it uh, anything you insert it it will be available for a search in a real time let's say by one second uh how you can perform the query you can use the rest api it is a totally uh, top of built on a http api so to power, there is a no console or like of the things you getting in other databases uh the kibana kibana is something a tool which is uh, which uh, works on top of the elastic search so if you want to visualize the data from the elastic search you can use the kibana and you can create the multiple visualization and uh, 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 visualization graphs dashboards and uh, you can just plot in and use it over there so uh, there is a lots of pre configured dashboard is available so if you are using nginx or apache or maybe mysql and you want to perform uh, you want to mo uh, monitor those performance so you can just uh, just uh, uh, use a file beat and uh, enable the mysql module and your dashboard will be ready in a few clicks so it's as simple as it is so kibana is something you you can say a visualization dashboard so i'll give you the how it looks like in a demo uh beats uh, so beats is a lightweight data shipper so it's like a agents so if you want to, like uh, in elastic apm i think uh, vivek will explain like uh, if if you want to perf um, perform monitoring something so you have to download the beats we have a uh, lots of beats file beat mysql beats and packet beat uh, like packet beat it uh, monitoring the networking uh, in in uh, in out call like this so we have a system beats also Uh, which keep uh, which uh, keep monitoring the system like kernels and the system logs etc so a uh, log test is something is like a uh, etl you can just uh, uh, like give the input and give output you can perform a uh, data transformation data modulation in that between this so this is a broader view of elastic stack and uh, now let's jump on a search as you type what is this and let's go so yes you must have seen this we used to do in daily life if you want to order something paneer kadai chicken whatever you want so we just type and uh, it's it's uh, it's give the suggestions you, you can see like this uh, the similarly on uh, on a book my show if you type anything it will give the suggestion okay this is something we want we want to achieve and it can be achieved by elastic search but it comes with the one question uh why to use elastic search to achieve this when i already have a solutions okay so if you are using mysql and uh, other other databases or uh, they having a uh, these kind of the solutions you can do a like regex and wild cards okay so you uh, people can make by using like like query like this and performing multiple like on multiple columns they they can do they can perform a wild cards or they can perform a regex by doing a pattern matching so it can be achieved right uh, but it it has a disadvantage okay it because it is a very costly okay and uh, the another thing is it's it's not you it's not very fast okay it it will get slow the this kind of the queries regex and wild cards and uh, sometime it can be block other queries as well in other databases or these things so it could be risky right 
इट कुड बी रिस्क रिस्क है भैया ठीक है एंड सो दैट्स वाई इलास्टिक सर्च कम्स इन द पिक्चर एंड इन इलास्टिक सर्च वाई इट्स ए स्पीड बिकॉज इट्स ऑलरेडी इंडेक्स योर डेटा ओके सो योर डेटा इज ऑलरेडी रेडी फॉर यू नो परफॉर्म सर्च और दिस थिंग्स इन वेरी स्पीड रिलेवेंस ऑफकोर्स इलास्टिक सर्च गिव यू द रिलेवेंस सर्च as as i said in the tinder if you want to search swipe left swipe right it gives the relevant uh, uh, suggestions and elastics is having a special field type search as you type so uh, when you define the schema or mapping in elastic search you can define this field uh, it need to be not integer not string but search as you type and uh, according to this elastic search will store your data so i'll give you the quick overview search as you search as you type okay it's a create a series of surf fields so uh, and creates a lots of token and filters so i'll give you the how elastic search works so i have given the string my name is ashish so elastic search is going to break all the words in a token all the words in the filters like my name is ashish so it's it is going to divide in the four words so you can achieve this by using a different kind of uh, analyzer and tokenizer kind of things uh, it gives the prefix and it fix search so prefix search we can say uh, it's like a uh, google when you when you start typing it it's give the uh, prefix search in fix search you can search any between in content let's say you want to find uh, any keyword in a whole block so yes you can you can use this kind of the search as you type so uh, okay let's let's go to the quick demo and uh, i'll try to give you the okay i think it's uh, so i have written one blog you can always prefer those uh, prefer that and you can just have a look uh, how it works and even we have a very good documentation on this so um, i'm going to quickly start my elastic search instance so just allow me takes some time okay so so this is a kibana okay this is a kibana and uh, you can you can do the queries you can perform the various kind of the operation by using kibana and there is a lot of dashboards there is a this section is available dashboards observability security it's provide the different dashboard for a different kind of modules so like if you are using apm so just go to here set up your uh, agents with your uh, machines and your dashboard will be ready here in a kibana so we are going to use here dev tools which is uh, specially built for to performing multi multiple types of queries so uh, let's say i already perform this let's say i want to check how many in, uh, indexes i have okay okay can Okay, this is a, this is the index is present right now. So uh, let me quickly create one so that we can store some sample data in in that index. So I'll just delete the previous one. Let's say uh, say it. this is a delete query. I'm deleting the indexes so that I can show you from the start. yeah so uh if you want to create an index let's let's quickly create the index i'm just copying this query and here the products what is that you are doing sorry what language are you using this is this is the rest api yeah so it's yeah font uh okay i think uh, perfect so uh yes so the index we have set up is it on sql db or no sql db so this is on elastic search so, so i want to understand how is it like uh, is it uh, 
sequel or non-sequel? It is a no sequel. I'll I'll let you know. I'll let's let's uh, insert some data. I'll show you. Okay. Uh, let's say I'm putting a um, meetup. Okay. Uh, yeah, and just let me insert some data. I think it should be. Sorry. So the indexing data is uh, let me check and come. So you can always these two elastic uh, documentation. So just go to index API. So you want to know like how it looks like the data when they insert it, right? Yeah, so basically, as far as I've understood, as of now, uh, Elastic provides a solution to store the data as well, and on that itself, uh, we can define the indexes and then it will search based on that. Correct. Okay. So imagine if we already have an existing data, mm -hmm. an existing home security view or an SQLD view. Got it. And I want to add an Elastic uh, layer on top of it saying that I want to leverage the what is the Elastic on the existing DB? Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to uh, insert the whole data in the Elastic search. The yeah, Elastic yes, search. yes. So we have a different connector already available for a MySQL or any databases. You can go and check uh, which fits for you and you can use it and you can transform the whole data into the Elastic search. And then I'll be responsible for the sync between my original Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the yes. Page. So uh, we having those automatic connectors as well. You can uh, try and this, yes. So, yeah. So, I'll just give you the quick overview. Okay. I think it's a good to go. Or do I should, should we move forward, guys? Yeah. Any idea? Okay. Cool. So, I'll just quickly. So, I'm making a one, um, one index. Okay, and uh, in index, I have a, a one field description, and I'm giving the type is a search as you type. This is a special field type. Okay, it's like we giving the string keywords or an integer. So it's it is something like this search as you type. So I'm just going to create this. Okay, it's been created. Just let's quickly check, quickly import some data. So it's inserted and now I'm going to search products. Search. Okay, my data is here. The description best jogging shoes for men. So what, what happens, uh, it, this is the behind the scene. Okay, so Elastic has taken the data and it's uh, created uh, multiple tokens and filters. Okay, so how it works. So when when you give the the type search as you type, uh, it it store the data on four subfields. Okay, the first uh, let's say we have given the description description. So it will create the description with the standard analyzer. Okay, and standard analyzer what it's going to do? It's going to break in this filter uh, these tokens. So best jogging shoes for men. This kind of the five token has been created, and there is a second uh, second subfield which is called the description dot two uh, two gram. It is a shingle token filter. So shingle token filter is basically it's create the token with the pair of two. So the token has been created like a best jogging jogging shoes shoes for for men kind of things. The similarly the three gram also there uh, and in the four the, the fourth subfield it is like edge and gram. So edge and gram is like a, B B B E best 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 J like this the field uh, the tokens has been created in the Elasticsearch. So Elasticsearch has break this line into these tokens. Now when you going to search with uh, any keyword, let's say I want to ser start searching like jogging. So it's going to find uh, going to find the among uh, across this all kind of tokens, which which it's created and. It's uh, that's why it's it's a fast. It's it's uh, it's always doing the indexing of this, and uh, it's always breaks the your content in the uh, lots of tokens. 
so uh, let me uh, perform such, some search over this i'll i'll do the multi match okay so yes this is how we can do search so whenever you want to uh, perform a search with the specific search as you file type field uh, you can just give the uh, name of field like this so this uh, this is coming now i'm just going to do like this so this is not because on this fields there is a no keyword with the name of job so let's say let's go here so i cannot see there is a keyword like this jog here is a jogging here is a jogging shoes this is a two pair here is a jogging shoes for but on the fourth field we have we have those index prefix so let's try to search with those, with that so to perform the prefix search we okay we need to use the bool prefix and uh, here i will i will give you the jog okay uh, jog query and it should search now so it's the the search is totally uh, based on your uh, what is your providing and it's going to match with the token whether it's matching or not now uh we will quickly upload one sample data uh and i have created one demo we will uh, quickly create some 1000 records on elastic search and uh, we will implement this okay so for a demo i have uh, written one python small script this script uh, already available on my uh, this url uh you can on a get this demo is available you can explore anyhow so i have already uh, installed this um, you know flask and elastic search so i'm just going to clone this let me delete this okay it's loading one question on yeah. the typo right like yes. if you are instead of money right uh -huh. you make a typo so are you saying for the typo also that we are index then it kept a uh, typo as in the sense you are striking funny but mm. even if you even uh, uh, replace a with o right Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, there is a different uh, analyzer for this. You can just apply for typo error, and it will give the suggestion. Like, did you mean type? Yeah. You are saying yes. It's in there. Uh, the the name is uh, just let me know. Uh, let me check. Uh, the analyzer name I am not reminding. I'll uh, just yeah. give it to you. But it's there. So if you if it's a misspell. or you have uh, entered the wrong spelling it will give the desired output so cool uh, i'm here so here uh, it's a small api uh, python uh, python script i have built one api which will you know uh, create a one web server and take the request and uh, it will take a request from the front end and perform the query on elastic search this query is the same which we have seen okay so first let me give you the let let's create the index first you will get the idea so i'm going to create this index in this index we have a five types of field first name last name street address company email etc and to all field i have given the same type search as you type yeah yeah okay Okay. So I'm going here. Going want to create index first. So index name will be search as you type. It's a short version I have put in. So it's created. Now I'm going to import some data. so this is a, a curl query bulk query by using this you can just import your json or data to the directly to the elastic search so 
I'm just going to use this. Uh, when you're cloning this repo, I have given some sample file as well, which you can check here. These are the sample file you can just quickly upload. So I'm just straight away copy this and upload it. Yeah, so data has been uploaded uh, on the SAIT uh, SAYT indexes. So let's let's search from this. So data is here. Now, in the top of the data, let's uh, let's uh, I have a, let's have a front end look. I have built a one front end look as well. Uh, Index.html. I'll just uh, open this index.html in a browser. Let me go. Think. Uh, Tool or elastic demo. I think I have Bangalore meetup. Yeah, so this is a front end I have already built with the, by using Bootstrap. So what uh, I'm going to uh, just type something. Let's say, oh, it's not working. Just we 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 need to start our server. You can just I have a Python three. Yeah, so it's start coming. So this data is coming from that uh, index which we have uploaded the, uh, on which we have uploaded the sample data. So uh, let's say I want to search anything like mail kind of uh, just a minute I think, uh, like we can do we can do search anything like uh, let's say a male here the thing is male female uh, name and the uh, ip kind of thing so i can search with the any quick any keyword and is going to search in the content uh, irrespective of order so i can i can search plaza i can search male or female at the same time so and it will going to perform the search for all these three keywords okay so this is how you can something achieve with your project as well so yeah so this is uh, something you just create and it will get the record so this is just demo this is it's it was performing the network call uh, let me show you it was just ajax one nothing uh, measure so so whatever keyword I'm giving here it's going to this API which is a Python one and the Python is query to the elastic search and it's getting the data and I'm displaying here so yeah it is a quick demo and let's get back to our slide okay so uh, yeah, I think uh, I think uh, I have explained the search as you type. It's a bit clear. So uh, if you have any doubts about anything elastic sets, just this is a forum I already told you. And yeah, that's it from my side. So any questions, I'm open. If you have any doubts, yeah. Sorry, I just. Uh, yeah, just uh, not already. Name. When you search for uh, a particular restaurant, so is there any way we can influence uh, what the, what shows it at the top? So what something is being searched very often, so. We want that particular uh, value to be shown at the top. So is there any way we can... 100 top. Yes, yes, uh, yes. yes. First of all, like, it goes through the database and then sees uh, this value is packing at the top of the database. And then, and then, and then, and then, so you, you are saying the top 10 result like search engine shows the ranking. So we have uh, the Elasticsearch have a concept of boost. 
so uh, it also give the relevance result with the help of uh, the term frequency it analyze how what kind of keyword is coming and the accordingly it uh, it uh, what we can say it adjust the ranking so whether this uh, this record should uh, show first or last it it uh, does automatically so there is a boosting concept which i think it's all uh, handled by elastic search only but you can boost by yourself if you want to uh, rank particular document on the uh, first so you can do manually there is a provision so any uh, other any question in the chat mukaram yeah yeah please क्वेश्चन मेल और फीमेल ओके सो दिस दिस क्वेरी आई है टू द इलास्टिक सर्च एज इट इज elastic search perform the you know filterization he he uh, like elastic search breaks the this keywords also in a terms like uh, is perform the three different queries for circle male female that for each uh, terms so uh, it's depend how uh, elastic search creating the terms so uh, uh, it's create basis on how what what kind of the analyzer you are giving so there is the uh, multiple analyzer available like standard uh, lower case analyzer english analyzer language specific analyzer so so uh, whatever the analyzer you have applied it is going to create the terms accordingly and then all over the top it will search accordingly so like this so any other question yeah oh customizable is the डैशबोर्ड एंड पाई चार्ट दिस these kind of things and uh, we we having the option it 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 will give you the link for the embedding and you can just put in your product and it will directly show the dashboard on your product as well so it's not a customized i i'm not getting but you can create you can just import your data in elastic and you can create the charts the dashboard you want like this elastic search right integrated it using the using a api to do it right Is there, is there any way in which I can uh, directly integrate my friends say react with Elastic Search? Okay, so uh, while while uh, connecting with the Elastic Search, this was I built on local, so I directly connected with the URL. So because of the security reason, you have to go via some middleware where you uh, you are going to uh, send the certificate and this kind of the things where you are going to uh, give the user roles authentication. like this so for this i think you will need a middleware right so it's not possible to if it's possible to like from directly front end to this i have not seen this case but i think it's good to have a middleware where you can is there a way to do it again i can post elastic service store the web class and experience how that integration uh like uh, if you say uh, let's say if i i i am going to write a javascript from the front end and directly so i would say no recommend i i wouldn't recommend but uh, you can try anyway uh, the middleware is you can do the uh, you can add the certificate and these kind of things elastic have a security uh, so i have not shown here you can create a different users roles 
like this which you can you need some middleware to handle those so that's why yeah i think if it is in premises by secure with the firewalls and everything i think you can do experiments on not network, yeah on the network it's the same out yeah on the network uh, elastic search comes with their its uh, security package xpack and uh, now by uh, uh, by version 8 it's come it the by default it's come with a security enable so yeah thanks yes sir sorry sensitive data so it's a it's a, so when you uh, uh, install the elastic stacks every uh, every stack like uh, kibana elastic uh, elastic search generate the certificate https certificate and it's a totally encrypted so uh, that's why it's always recommend to uh, install elastic stack with the proper tls security like this so every network call will be of course it's it will be encrypted yes sir as you mentioned as you mentioned that uh, we will like let's say uh, a big company like amazon or something so we can't uh, directly have elastic on the db we need to be imported into the elastic store mm -hmm. but let's say in a company like banking or something where the data is highly volatile like multiple uh, loads of data is going in and out every day mm -hmm. in that case uh, what do we do because the elastic and the original db will not be in sync right so in, in that case if i want to leverage like i want to search all transactions by particular customer or something so mm -hmm. in that case what do we do what the middle ground uh, so in in such case i would recommend like this is what i have seen so if you have a very a heavy write going on in a current live so what i have what i have seen people use a different uh, another pipe like apache or redis or something where they open another pipeline for elastic search and they start harvesting data in uh, in the board databases okay and some of i have seen if if delay is okay with your product for a search and you they are like your client is not going to search real time uh, they will search tomorrow like this so you can uh create a concept like hot a hot and cold kind of concept so for the cold you you can use elastic search definitely so you will get the window yeah 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 so basically um the way i have used it in past is in the same scenarios is uh, you can build an application in the way and you run a cron job uh, where you are seeking elastic with the data the connectors perfect and uh, and it's not necessarily you know you push everything which is there mm. in the database into elastic Only the only those things that you want, where people want to search. So, for example, when I was at Blackboard, we were only searching for uh, warehouses. We want only warehouses to be faster. So, right. we want to search the right warehouses in the city. We want those to install warehouses in that city or something like that. So, if you want to do that, you push only those data, and you want to do, you know, whenever there is a new warehouse gets added, I want to push that data to Elastic. So there is a concept which is always something uh, that uh, with the habitat which is better because it makes sure that yeah. it gets updated. Right. So that's how I do it. So, uh, so just uh, adding this, like in last to last organization, I got the same problem. We have a we had a very heavy write on my SQLs and these things, and we have to introduce the elastic search, and we cannot stop everything, right? So uh, there was a one queuing system Redis we were using for the queuing. and uh, so we have simply start replicate our events data with uh, two uh, started pushing the data in the two queues so queue one for elastic uh, and queue two for mysql so both data was going so uh, i think you can do experiments like it's depend on case to case right so yes any other questions okay i think 
yeah vivek please stage is yours thank you guys Can you just confirm you can hear me again? Back. Folks online, you can hear me, you can see my slide. Can you just confirm? You can hear and see my slide, both online and offline. I'm just waiting for confirmation from the uh, online audience. Just let's wait. You can hear. I can do that. People are able to hear. Cool. So, how is the session until now? Both online and offline. Nice. I'm being conscious about it. <laughs> how is it? Good. Quite cold. Quite cold, right? You should come here. <laughs> this, this deck you know ac deck just above me yeah it's hitting right here <laughs> and somebody placed it right here so <laughs> so you're fine there don't worry cool so um you know there were a bit of conversations which we had on uh, elastic apm and a uh, couple of things you know we discussed on elastic and other things so so today I actually plan to do a session on Elastic APM for Java Spring Boot app and uh, specifically on uh, Spring Cloud. Um, how many of you know Spring Framework? Java Spring Framework? It doesn't matter, it's okay. I mean, it's, if you don't know, it doesn't matter. It's just a framework, it's just a Java code, a simple code, um, amazing language amazing framework uh, for building your uh, you know microservice applications so that's that's the most important thing if you want to build a microservice applications you would choose something like this as a framework so that's what it is um 
So first question is, um, what's Elastic? So yeah, you are all here, people who are there you know, online. There was one full session for that. So now what is Elastic? Let's keep it interactive. This is a meter, not a classroom. Okay. Database. Is it correct, Ashish? Somehow. <laughs> Somehow it is correct. You know, elastic uh, developers, you know, they feel you know different when you saw, you know when you say it is a database. Um, you know, it's you know <laughs> they don't want to call it as a database, right? So it's, it's, we call, used to call search engine. Search. We used to get the question, can we use as a primary storage uh, before few years? And the debate was going on the database versus search engine. So right now, yeah, you can use as a database as well, and it's a search engine. The search engine is a primary case. Yeah, perfect. So that is what they call. OK, so whenever somebody asks you what is Elastic, you have to say it is a search engine, not a database. Okay. <laughs> okay. Perfect. So before I go there, you know, before I deep dive into a lot of questions, and I'll I'll be asking you a lot of questions. Um, I just want to introduce myself. Uh, that's me. I'm senior cloud advocate, um, part of cloud and AI engineering team. Um, software developer at IBM for uh, almost nine years. I was there. I was uh, into Java, Python, everything, and then. DevOps solution architect, head of DevOps at Blackbird. You know, that's where I used extensively the Elastic. Elastic was you know, primarily used in various formats um, for search, for um, you know, the building the ELK stack to you know monitor stuff, to get logs and all those stuff. So I used Elastic there. That's where I fell in love with Elastic, by the way. So Elastic is my favorite tool, by the way. So that is the reason why I keep delivering talks on Elastic. So that's that's something which I do. But somehow, you know, been a lot of years where I've spent hands on on Elastic. So that's my. Uh, but either ways, it is my favorite tool. So being a co-founder, being part of DigitalOcean, being part of Microsoft from strategy and investments, and also currently as uh, cloud and AI engineering and uh, you know, I'm a technophil. You know, what you know what is technophil is? No? Okay, technophil is a person who loves technology and tries new things and you know, every day he tries something new. And that's what I was trying 14, 15 days back when Ashish reached out and I said, okay, I'll and I even before he reached out, I actually reached out to him and said, hey, I know I was trying something and I want to do a talk on this. OK, so so that's that, I mean, that's what uh, a technophil is, right? So it keeps trying something new and uh, it keeps failing. I'll tell you why. Um, I'll show my demo is failing. <laughs> OK, so that is one thing. Anyways, um, so today uh, I'm going to talk about the observability, right? So APM is is what observability is. And uh, often, you know, you know, people confuse APM with uh, performance um management tools right and there is like the agers or any which is specific to doing tracing and other things but you know often people you know not uh, you know think about the whole thing it provides you and uh observability is can be broadly divided into four how many of you are devops background i know there are a couple of them are here devops background a couple of them are dev developers a couple of them are students so just to want to give you a overview of this, um, you know, you have an application. Okay? You have some kind of application which you're running, maybe an app, maybe some uh, e-commerce site, you know, Flipkart or whatever it is, it is running, right? But at the back end, you know, somebody has to keep looking into the health of this application. And that is what um, you know, observability is. And it gives you a whole view. Okay, it, it provides you a complete view of your application. So there are four different categories where you will debug things. Okay, and uh, these categories are nothing but tracing. So I'll come to tracing later, which is complicated. We'll go there later. The first thing is logging. 
you know about logging, right? So it's a simple, as a developer, you always make sure that you log something, even though you don't like it, but you do it. Um, from a, you know, if you are in a corporate world, uh, they will give you a format where this is how you have to do it. As a developer, this is how you have to go for it, and this is how you have to, you know, build applications, right? These are, and then you get caught in your reviews, code reviews, right? You know, and if you're not doing it, your code review will fail, right? So that's that's something which is always there. So logging is important uh, from a developer perspective, and also from a DevOps engineer perspective, and also um, a person who is looking into all of this, which is SRE who is looking into most of these things uh, perspective, right? So there's an application and there is a developer who is, you know, instrumenting the log in the code and then it is getting logged and somewhere it has to be logged, right? And there is a place where it gets logged and there has to be a place where we can see the logs and other things. That's where Elastic comes into picture. So there is a bunch of machines, there is a bunch of things which you're running, which is containers, or a bunch of things you are running with Kubernetes. So you want to send those logs to one single place, one central place, that's where Elastic comes in. So you can see that at one place, right? So that is what it does. And metrics is basically a kind of a telemetry. You know, it's basically your, you know, you know rates, the latencies, the response time, all of these things, um, you know, is captured as part of the metrics okay and um, health is very important if how many of you know kubernetes okay so in kubernetes you can you know you, you know about two different probes which is there right it makes shows whether a pod is available for you to uh, you know you to uh, send requests for or whether it is running or not all of these things are very important from a even from a non kubernetes non cloud native tool sets you have vms you have different places where your applications are running and you want to make sure your vm health is good right so all of these things is captured through health endpoints so health endpoints is basically nothing but in a microservice applications there are endpoints there is a, a simple api which is there and you are trying to see is this is up and running it is fine how is the health of this and all those things so if an api is failing then you will know there is api failure is happening right and then there is distributed tracing which is my favorite you now in a microservice application this is my favorite part which is distributed tracing because you know if, if you see this diagram as well you know the diagram speaks a lot about it uh, a trace is basically a request there's only one request out there, but it is talking to multiple different services. Okay. And there could be different services, which I can, you know, if you, if you're going for book my show, you know, you can see that, you know, there is PBR cinemas and they also book on Inox and everywhere, right? This, this book my show is talking to different services as well. So it could be different services and you want to know what is the performance of this service and what is the handshake happening? What is, what is the, in what context this particular request is talking to the other service. All of these things can be traced, okay? There is a context, there is a lot of things. Everything comes in um, in the distributed tracing. So I'll not go deep dive into all of these things because this is what ABM covers, okay? The Elastic ABM covers all of these things whenever you uh, inject or instrument an uh, ABM into, uh, into your application, this is what it does. Okay. So let me stop slides. Oops. Okay, I did different stuff. Uh, just uh, give me a minute. Okay. I don't have any much slides because I have. So what I'm going to do is basically, um, we're going to deploy a Spring app, which is a framework, which is a simple Java uh, framework. And then what we're going to do is, um, you know, a couple of things, and basically deploy it onto the um, Azure Spring Cloud, and 
make sure that we apply um, elastic APM on top of that. That's it. It's a simple demo. Um, and it is very new as well. It is something um, if I have to show you the date of update of this particular article is five, you know, zero five zero six, <laughs> which is like how many, how many days? Like 10, 15 days back. Right? They have updated it. OK, so a couple of things which is new for this. Anyways, I'll uh, show you this, how you can get started with Spring application. OK, so there is um, start.spring.io website. So if you go there, I'll just show you the. So can you see this? OK, so if you see this, there is project and you can choose between projects. Um, and then you can choose the language you're going to use and obviously Spring Boot uh, version, which you are looking at. And um, obviously names you'll give. This is all Java related and then packaging how you want to do it. I want to package it as jar and with Java version. And what are the dependencies you want? You want to build a API. You want a configure, you know, configure client and something which is to configure the uh, Spring Cloud and a couple of other things which is to build the rest uh, based services and other things and you can do add bunch of uh, dependencies as well even before you start the spring application so if you are from a java world you know right there are a bunch of dependencies which you can add right and uh, if you use this uh, add dependencies and you can see this bunch of dependencies which is there okay so what I have done is I have generated this code, right? So I picked, uh, you know, I picked the right set of uh, Spring app and I've just taken that and I've generated the right set of code and I've been using it. So what I've done is very simple. So once this is downloaded, there is a, you know, there is a code which we need to change. So I'll go to code. Where is my code? Here is the code. Can you see the code? You can see the code. So this is the code which is there, right? So um, you know, basically, this is very simple. It is doing whenever you go to slash, um, it just sends a message. That's it. So it's a simple API. You can actually build this APIs into multi multiple things. Okay, how to build this? How to use this in an API situation? Is basically you can just say here is message. Um, and you can create you know, code here, write code, and then just save it and you have an API which is running. So that's that's the most simplest thing. And uh, greetings from, let's change this, okay. Good, so I just changed um, some code. Okay, I have the code ready. So all I have done is uh, taken this code and uh, deployed it. Uh, so basically, it's easy to deploy. Uh, you just have to create a Spring Cloud um, in Azure. So when you go into the Azure, if you type um, Spring App, so you just go and create a new Spring App, and just you get the app up and running. This is this is not the app. Basically, this is the Spring Spring Cloud instance. OK, so um, in this Spring Cloud instance, I am not going deep into this because this is just a, you know to deploy things there. OK, it is just a, to deploy stuff. So this is basically a simple Azure uh, Spring app where I have created it. And under that, there is something called as apps uh, where you can go and deploy your apps. So you can just go and deploy your any app there. So we will deploy one which we have so that we will see uh, how we will we do it. So we have this Azure Spring Cloud. Everything is up and running and we have the account set and everything. I will not go in depth. So only thing which we have done is now is change the code, right? So we did go here and change the code. And once we have changed the code, what we will do, we will go and deploy it. So how do we deploy stuff? Anyone from Java?
Can you see the? You can see right commands. Okay. So usually in Java, it's all about form dot XML, right? So once you have configured your form dot XML, it's easy to run. And when I showed you those dependencies and other things, when you uh, you know when you when we zip that and packaged it right while in the uh, spring dot io start dot spring dot io what happens is uh, you'll just get a simple zip file like this hello spring dot zip okay all dependencies already part of your palm file so nothing to uh design something new start from scratch and all those stuff so everything is already built so you just have to go there and get started. So I'm just going back to this code and uh, hopefully this will run or it I did this. I didn't copy the orders. OK, we'll do in between clean. Okay. So I already have built it, so I'm just trying to build again. So since I changed the code, I'm building it again. OK, so. It will take some time to build um the reason why i have already created those um azure cloud spring cloud and all those things is because it's going to take time so i don't want to waste time you know being a last speaker it is bad <laughs> right <laughs> cool and i have it built now i'll go to the target this is where you will see you no know, the jar has been created so you see this time this is where the jar is ready right now jar is ready i just want to deploy this jar okay so what we will do is if you see i have already deployed this if you see this right you can see that there's an app been built and it has been deployed already and you can see what it is showing also this was the previous comment which we had and uh, what we are doing now is we are redeploying re it but while redeploying it there are two things you have to do i just showed you how you can create this spring app right it is it is the main instance but for you to deploy an app onto this cloud you have to do two steps one is to create the app and then deploy your app okay so you can you can see here uh, there is a create app here you can go and create a new app if you want to and it's easy it's just you know give all the you know information here and just click on create it gets created or you can do it via like me a person who loves uh, cli is the spring hyphen cloud app create why it is not taking why the one okay is the spring hyphen cloud so you can see the, new, the command it is a create command so i need to create this and to create this is very simple it's the name of the app it's the instance of of the uh, spring cloud which is wikibyte which is my instance which i have and it is a az spring cloud app which is also a cli command for doing it and then there is a um, you know resource group and then there is there we have uh, you know endpoint which is true because i want to access this app um access outside right i don't want to make it private otherwise i will not be able to show demo so i want to make sure that it is not private right so i just i have already done this i've already created it so not not we don't need that so we need to deploy so deploy is where we are doing now again i'm deploying it so i want to deploy it again because i made changes to the code i created uh i built the code as well as a jar and I want to make sure that I want to run this again. So this is where you know you'll go back and uh, deploy it, and we will try and deploy. Hopefully it gets deployed uh, because I'm having troubles uh, today. Uh, demo gods are really not really helping me. <laughs> so from morning I'm trying to do a lot of stuff. So let's we hope it will get deployed. Okay. Until then, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask me. It will take some time because it's using network. Um, yeah. How 
always you know spring cloud second cloud from other large or clouds as always seems very similar really exploring platforms what are the main things using spring cloud or most other large cloud platforms so uh, the question here is uh, what what is the difference between uh, this is for the online audience i'm just repeating the question for them um the question here is um, what is the difference between the azure spring cloud and what are the other pass offers which we have which is like could be for app, app service or container apps or something else that's what you mean right okay so uh, spring um spring cloud is specifically for spring boot applications that is one the most important thing is um you know off the shelf you get um all of these service mapping and all of these um, things which is like distributed tracing application view and how these service discovery and other things happen right so all of these things are available with you on the dashboard and you can see that interactions and uh, that is something which is off the shelf right and also um, you can deploy it with uh, your own required um, what do you call that uh, the the resources basically the compute um, so you can deploy it with specific computes so you don't need to be um, you don't need all of these if you do go back and deploy all of these things on your own uh it will take a lot of effort and a lot of time and if you see now it was just um uh, you know just uh, some commands which i run right so i if i have um, a microservice application if i had packaged it as uh, spring app and it, the couple of jars which is available out there and i just need to run a couple of commands and it is up and running for me and that is with all of these new things which is uh, which is on top of that where you can go back and uh, see the complete spring uh, cloud working so that is the difference because you can use different different things different different containers yeah sorry sorry i didn't get you yeah that is what so all of these things comes with comes with the cloud which we provide right so there is reliability and performance and everything because you are choosing the right set of um in a pricing tier and all those things right so you choose that what you want and comes with support and other things so there is a difference and if you want to do it on your own it is quite a milestone so that is the difference right so it's based on like your you know um, how you want to use it how you want to use a service so that's the thing so we created an app to have multiple microservices they will all go there as an app and how will they be that is what it provides service discoveries yeah yeah and you can basically obviously you will have to uh, build a code on top of it but there is a way to see the services talking to each other and uh, application mapping even the apm provides you that i'll show you even apm actually provides uh, you the service mapping and uh, and rest of the other things which is which i told right the uh, observability specific stuff tracing and all those things um but spring cloud uh, it also provides you on top of that it also provides you the scalability performance and other things which he mentioned right and with the infrastructure for you to run it yes yeah no no not ebf it's not ebf but tracing it does this specifically uh, since you have applications uh, you know built with the spring cloud and added these frameworks into the framework um and use the cloud uh, it on you know it on the fly it gives you all of these things so that is the thing but instrumentation of if you are using kubernetes and other things then it is a different uh because for that you will have to go back and use something like uh, dappers or something for non instrumenting of um your tracing and other thing if you are 
if you're looking at instrumenting uh, you know if you're looking at raising as a specific thing uh, and you don't want to instrument uh, i think dappers will help you yeah so when you want to do the next version, you have to work it up there or is there where you can connect to RTP and Which one? The app? Next to app's next version or? Huh. I mean, it is, uh, this was my next version. First version had some other code and I just changed the code and deployed it again. So it's in Java, right? You have to build it. And once you build it, the, build the jar, you have to push the jar. And the process has not changed. <laughs> so, huh? Yeah, you can build the pipeline, obviously. I mean, that is a different thing. Like the, it's like a production. If you have, uh, the moment you push the code, uh, it gets built, and the artifacts goes into the storage, and then from storage it gets picked and it gets deployed, and all those things. And you can use it as a command line as well. When you can give the artifacts uh, path and all those things. So all of those things are CI/CD, um, you know, discussions. But this is this is an example of um, you know basically how you can push the code to Azure Spring Cloud, and what you can do from a you know if you have changed the code how it is going. So that's that's what I have just showed you. It is just a simple Spring frame, you know, Spring framework, and uh, right now it is there on the cloud. I know it's it's available. I haven't done any instrumentation of Elastic yet, right? So I'll I'll go there now. But that is what now is. So we have this code. We have it is running and it is everything is running fine. Now we will have to instrument APM to get the complete view of observability of this particular app. How will you do it, right? So specifically. Um, you know, there is a good article, amazing um, article for this. And there is a very good example called Pet Shop as well, which is a microservice application. And you can use that for, you know, testing this, all of these things. Um, all I have done is uh, basically we have created the app, right? We did see that, right? We did use this command uh, to create an application and um, we don't need storage, but you can still go and use storage. But I'll show you why this storage has been given here. Uh, this is Azure storage. Okay, the file storage, why they have mentioned in the uh, this whole doc, you know, uh, doc. It is basically to manage the uh, uh, manage your agents. Basically, the agent you have. Uh, you need to add that agent. So APM works with agents. Okay, so there is client and there is server. Elastic server is there, and you have application, and these applications have agents, and you are taking that agent, and agent is pushing data. That's all. So it's a simple client-server architecture. There is no, uh, there is no difference in, in that. Okay, cool. So there is, um, you know, if there are ways to deploy Elastic as well. If you are deploying it through Azure, you can go to Azure portal and type in Elastic Search, and you can just click on that button and do it like this. You go here, type Elastic. You have Elastic Cloud. Just click on that and go and deploy. Uh, create Elastic Search, and you will be able to deploy it. That is one way to do it. Okay. The other way to do it is to just directly go to the Elastic Cloud and uh, go and deploy your Elastic uh, instance uh, cluster, in fact, there uh, with Azure or any cloud you are familiar with, right? So you can use anything. So that's what it is. And this is the, uh, this is what he was also showing, right? This was, this is the cloud, basically. So I have deployed it directly on their cloud. And from there, I've used Azure. Uh, to deploy it. So I'm not using the Azure uh, Elastic deployment there. So this is directly on the um, Elastic Cloud. And the reason behind it is because I had run out of my trial version. <laughs> so <laughs> that is the reason. So this is uh, how I have deployed it. So this is just an instance. Okay. There is, if you go here 
and click on APM. So I've already instrumented. I'll show you how to instrument, but I'll uh, before instrumenting. If you go to the observability, there are a bunch of things it does, right? Um, he talked about it, right? So basically, it is in search. It also provides you an observability. It also provides security related to data and other things. And there is a bunch of things it does in analytics. OK, and I was listening to some question here, whether we can build UI uh, based on your images and other things, right? You can do it. You know, it's like Kibana. You can use it for a lot of stuff. If you go through their uh, website and if you go through their use cases and other things, you can do a lot of stuff. OK, so that is what um, Elastic is. And specifically from an observability perspective, it does a couple of things. That's what we discussed. We discussed logs, right? We discussed logs. You can see here. There is logs, right? So you can connect logs and stream logs into this. Uh, you have an application, Spring application. You can connect it here. And then you can connect metrics. Metrics, I did, I, I did talk about the response time and uh, you know rate at which throughput is uh, right rate at which these responses are coming and all of these latencies and all of these things uh, you are sh sharing there and apm has a trace and dependencies and service map which i talked about right there are different services how each services is is mapped to each other uh, that is what you're going to see and there is dependencies there is trace trace we discussed how you can build the trays and other things and a couple of other things which you can do is, is the certificates which is for the security and other things which which you will be building it for but when i say services it will give you a list of services which is attached to this right for the apm for you to monitor it right so you have a service and you enable the apm on that service that is this is our service right this is our service Take, I know, understand this is an API. Basically, when I hit a slash, this is what I'm getting. So, this is our service. And for on top of this, if I go and apply APM and connect it to my Elastic Cloud, and if you go to the Elastic Cloud, what you will see? Anybody? This one, which is the service which will get listed here. Okay. I'll show you how to instrument it, but this is how it was getting listed here. OK, and once it is listed here, you can go back and see what is the data and other things because it is pulling all the data from the agent. So simple architecture client that is your service, which is running. You instrument this client to have, uh, you know, to send data through the agents and the agent sends the data to the cloud, which is Elastic Cloud. And Elastic Cloud is, you know, building a lot of stuff. You know what's the good thing about uh, APM here is? Anyone? You, do you see anything specifically on this on the screen? Anything? Yeah. Good one. <laughs> yeah. The anomaly detection. I mean, I'm surprised to see that. Because it's, I, I talked about it um, way back in 2016 or 17 in one of the conference where I was using the wa Elastic Watches. And I talked about how you can build, um, um, how you can build, you know, plan your, you know, so, so, you know, solving some of the issues which you get automatically without even human intervention. And how we can solve these problems. I was I was doing that demo and on watches. I was using elastic watches at that time, but today they have it as a uh, you know separate uh, thing there, which is to identify some of the issues and uh, you know and fix it. It is basically auto remediation, right? So SRE is not required. Uh, you know, it will detect a couple of things. I don't mean SRE is not required. I mean, you know, a couple of issues you can automate it. It can be fixed. Okay, so that is what it does. And obviously, alerts and rules and other things which you can build. Alerts are basically not. Every, you don't know when what is alert, right? You know, basically, if there is traffic coming in, this is normal traffic. It's not an alert, right? But if there is a 
some changes in the traffic you want to get an alert and you want to make sure that you go back and see what is happening on your systems how is the latency how is the performance and everything and then fix a couple of things and catch hold of developers on saturdays and make sure you get them to fix it by monday uh, that's what it does right that is that is what uh, you know, we, we use this tool for, I was, as a dev, DevOps engineer, I did use it for that. <laughs> okay. So, by the way, uh, let's come back. How to instrument this? Okay. Let's come back to instrumenting it. So, we all know, right, we have this, we, you know, whole thing we, we, we are using. But most importantly, we need to have a agent, right? So, may, you know, for Java, there is an agent available. So you can see here. Are you able to see this agent? So there is, um, and if you go to Maven Central repository, there is agent available. You just need to download it and uh, instrument it. That's all. So it's very easy to do it. You know, you just go to that Maven Central and search for the agent, or you can go to the Elastic website and get it, or you can go to the uh, Elastic Cloud and um you know <laughs> elastic cloud has become so big that you know i've been able to uh, navigate is becoming very difficult uh, every time they release a new <laughs> version <laughs> okay so um there is somewhere you can click and get the agent here right in cloud okay i've done that i actually i installed it through the um, through the uh, elastic cloud itself and that's how i'm using it um, so yeah, anyways, so basically agent is nothing but a jar package. I've just downloaded it. Okay. It is just a jar, which is there, which is in Maven central. You can also see this here. So just click on the jar you now download button and, uh, it's available for you. And once it is available, all you need is, uh, to apply this agent on your application, right? That's all. So what we will do is this is available. All we need to do is to run this command. Okay, so this particular command, which is there, you, if you run this command, that's what it will do. So let's see whether. Um, so there is a way to get the tokens as well. So if you go into the inventory, you can get those uh, tokens uh, while you're creating that itself. It will show you the tokens, right? For me, it, it showed, showed me the token right away there. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is my token? How did my this one? Where do I get tokens? We'll figure that out, but whenever you create um, agent whenever you download that jar file it gives you the whole command what you need to run yes, it shows, the, it shows the whole command you need to run okay that's the command i have i'll show you so this is a command which it shows okay this is the command so basically it's a nothing but a java command but i am not running this command but this is what it shows you okay this is not required for me it is not a necessary thing and all i need here is the token and the url and and the um, um, you know basically what i need to provide in the service name and other things so it's basically the information which i need which is the url and the token Okay, so you can also go and generate your own secret on APM. So it's on the cloud. Basically, if you go and create, click on navigation and navigate yourself and figure it out, uh, you'll be able to create the token as well. So that is something which is um, available. So I just taken this token and everything and uh, I have run. Okay, let me show what I have run. Az Spring Cloud 
app deploy what it is what did i run what is the command yeah this is the command which i have run so the command is very simple you know but it looks big it, it's you know you don't worry about it but it's very simple to understand all the thing which it showed me right uh, while i created the agent while i downloaded the agent it is showing me all that information i'm just inputting those information here so if you see here it is the same app deployment command of spring cloud i'm deploying this app i have the jar file uh, when i built it when i built the code the jar file was ready on top of that i am doing this deployment and there is artifacts i am the same artifact which i am giving here right if you see here the artifact is the same everything is the same and here java option uh, elastic apm so i have downloaded that elastic apm which in the maven central if i download uh, it's on my laptop i am using it through laptop but in you know in a production sense and other things you will download and keep it in some storage and you are going to use it from in the from some of the storage right so that is what it will do and then this is the app name which is hello spring and then app application package uh, and elastic apm url and token and other things and this is my uh, instance of spring cloud that is the same command which i am using and the my uh, resource group name so that is what i am giving so all of things are same from the previous command um, it's just that i added uh, specifically uh, for uh, the you know adding agent on top of the uh, deployment which i am doing for spring so this is a new feature which got enabled last 15 days or 20 days back it is still in not a ga okay it is it is still under preview and a lot of things have been uh, been uh, developed on top of this but this is what i wanted to show when you run this command basically what happens is it goes to observability as my best my observability and i when i search for apm service so you can see i get hello spring right when i run this command basically it creates a service called hello spring which is the name of my elastic uh, spring uh, deployment with the elastic agent so now you know basically i should have got all of these things which is the latency information throughput transactions which is happening failed transaction rates and everything all the details on on specifically for this you know uh, this setup it's not coming <laughs> so so i will have to go and figure it out why it's not coming but uh, this is how you set it up okay and um, um and and the reason why it is not coming maybe because there's a lot of changes happening there uh, maybe uh, some issue uh, it is not throwing up here but this is how you can get all the things like right? dependencies error service map everything is up and running here and this is how you can see the service maps also there is only one service which is running so it is showing one service so basically what i showed you now is there was a java app which is a spring framework i took that app i made sure it was built as a jar and deployed it to azure spring cloud which is which is again to host these spring frameworks i hosted this on spring framework and then what we did is instrument the uh, elastic java apm on top of this java code and once i have done that you know the it should show up all the um, you know throughput uh, transactions and fail rates and everything on this elastic cloud so it should it should show all these data and it should show up this you know show all of uh, uh, this data on this particular cloud right so that is what it does so um this is what i wanted to cover basically this how to instrument it um that's 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 it from my end but if you have any questions uh, i can answer that yeah
Uh, redeployed the app with the APM. Yeah. So first time when you do it, there was no APM. So it was just an app on Azure Spring Cloud. Then when you run the second command with the agent, then you will see um, there's a redeploy. It is always push based, I believe. It is push based. I think pull based I have seen only Prometheus, but I have not seen any other um, any other tool. Um, it depends on different different scenarios. Uh, so the Prometheus is really good at telemetry only. So it's good. It you know it is pull. Uh, it is just pulling the data from there. Uh, push base is basically anytime something happens, you're pushing it. Um, you don't need to push everything. And push is obviously on a um, large scale, right? You are doing a lot of things. Um, so that is why you don't want to push everything. And there are many various ways to sample the data as well. Like if you if you think about distributed tracing, right? You don't need to push everything, right? Not every every transaction is important. And you will do sampling, saying that okay, um, I need every alternate data to uh, alternate request to uh, to be pushed into the uh, distributed tracing, or you can even mention after five requests you send that uh, next request to the you know into the uh, distributed tracing. So there is ways you can instrument it, and when you instrument in that way. Um, there are different tools which has different powers. So that's the whole point. Any other questions online audience? If you're there, please let me know. Thanks for joining, by the way. You know, it's it's almost like three hours now and they have been online and it's, it's really amazing. So any any questions there or here? Yeah. So we've used it with Node.js, Java, and Golang. Any new languages added? Yeah, uh, I think there is a five or six or seven uh, uh, SDKs are available. Okay. Yes, you can indicate. Oh, you you mean APMs? Uh, the agents, 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 huh? Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. True. There are seven languages. Yeah. That would be a problem if you have a language. That is, I think you, you should have that language specific SDK, right? Yeah. So, Glow Root will do it only for Java. Okay. This is a similar thing for Glow Root, but it will do only Java, it will not work. Okay. <laughs> this is where you find agents and this is where you find how to download <laughs> agents i found it i am able to navigate <laughs> okay so this is where you find uh, maven central to download just click on that and you, you, you see here right it gives you that command so this is what I mentioned there. This is the command which it provides you. Um, and I've just taken the URL, the token and other things. And I've made changes to the package name and the name of the service which I'm using. And I've just added it into the uh, you know, Spring uh, Azure Spring Cloud app deployment uh, command. And I've just instrumented it. So that's all I've done here. So here, if you see, all languages it supports. So language and also frameworks, by the way, if you see the frameworks as well, you can see there is Django framework and Flask and different framework. There's .NET. So it's not more than, it's, I think it's more than seven, right? That's good. Yeah. We can ask, like, what's that, like, what we can scale? Scale? Yeah. Scale what? Like elastic or scale? How we can scale? Scale. I'm asking from developers. 
how we can scale the elastic cluster, cluster or the whole application as you application. well that's a huge discussion <laughs> <laughs> there are various ways to scale um but yeah it depends right if uh, the reason why kubernetes came into picture was to scale so if you're using kubernetes in the right way you can definitely scale um and it, and and with virtual kubelets uh, it's even much better as well so there are many th ways to scale if, if if you're not using kubernetes if you're in a uh, using vms and other things obviously scaling with vms um and if you're using pass you're scaling with pass if you're scaling with elastic as a elastic as a service so elastic is a cluster right so you need to add more clusters to it and other things so elastic also provides kubernetes as a thing and it you can also deploy it as a you know, um controller and you can also scale it via kubernetes as well so there are different ways and it also depends on different contexts so we can obviously um uh talk about it after the what you are actually looking at uh, from a scale perspective after this session there is question in the uh chat basically it's basically on is java based integration to elastic search happening in real world i don't see much uh, ingestions okay as we have kafka python logstash there is a very less chance of java i guess correct me if I'm... so it doesn't depend on uh, so to answer to this question is uh, you know java is definitely a programming language and people use it and whenever people are using it they would go back and use elastic search as well so that is depending on different different company and different different strategies uh, people adopt so there is one thing how would there's one more question uh, by the way so how would you compare elastic apm to a tool like new relic okay this is interesting um I, I would leave it to Ashish if you want to <laughs> talk about it <laughs> because you are it's your pitch so right <laughs> you really can uh, yeah you should yeah. talk to mukund because i am very less experienced with new relic yeah. uh, but yeah. i have the more uh, fact i would say because if you want everything in your own uh, server right then it would be the right use case can you really could taking your data so one of one of the one of the difference which uh, mukund is talking about is um you know you are going to sh share data with the new relic team so which you don't want to do it so you want to make sure that you want to own your data that's where you're going to use elastic apms okay other one is cost so cost and basically it's cost basically it's cost <laughs> We have Blue Root in Java that can do this thing. Yeah. So uh, the idea there is to do in Java, whereas New Relic can do all. Again, Elastic uh, can do all. See, every tool has its own uh, advantages and disadvantages, right? So um, the first thing you need to ask when you are using a tool is why I should not use this tool. So instead of asking why I should be using this tool. so that will give you a better understanding of the tool you know, when you when you think about why you should not be using it that's when you will try to see where the issues are why you should not be using it so that's how you go about choosing a tool not choosing it because whenever you know whenever somebody ask you in a in a service industry in fact whereas it was in hcl they ask you the first question is which tool we need to use for solving this problem so the moment they ask somebody ask this question everybody goes on google and ask which tool i need to use <laughs> right that that give that is you know opinionated and lot of uh, information comes out and when you just just reverse that and search for why should not why i should not be using this tool then you will get to know uh, why you should not be using it and in which Uh, situations you should be uh, not using this tool so that's that's how you you choose uh, cool i think um 
there are no questions in the chat so uh, no questions here as well so we will take a break and I, i'll just thank people who have joined our online you know thank you very much for joining us um i know it's three hours of session you're sitting online and watching us and so it's a round of applause for all of them who are sitting for three hours who are watching us online and uh, and by the way you know it's it's like uh, more than 25 people are sitting there uh, which is really good and this is something which is an innovative thing which has happened after pandemic as well right so we are able to stream uh, things to people who are, who cannot uh, you know be available here um, and they have their own you know uh, things to do and they also want to you know learn from us and share with us as well so i hope uh people will come back here as well thank you very much for coming in um i think thank thanks elastic team for coming here as well so i want to hand it over to you if you want to talk and you already wrapped very beautifully so thanks thanks to microsoft team vivek and uh, we hope we will meet more frequently because uh, the pandemic has over, not over but yeah so the things is getting open so we will try to start a meet up thread more frequently so yeah that's it from our side thanks mukram thanks vivek to be here and thanks to you all to being a wonderful audience thank you thanks so uh, we have a swags we have a lunch as well in the cafeteria so enjoy and we have a stickers elastic specific so you can just have it <laughs>